Hi, this is Chippy, this time with Ultrabook News, and we've got a Samsung Series 9 here, so something a little bit different this time. This is a 1.3 kilograms, it's about 2.5 pounds, I believe. 1600 euros worth of Sandy Bridge laptop, 13 inches, but it's ultra thin. It's an ultra interesting device because Intel in um, the recent um, Computex event talked about Ultrabooks. And the idea about Ultrabooks is they want to bring in some high power, thin and light, highly secure uh, laptops in the sort of 12, 13 inch reign at a sub thousand dollar price. This is a device that's got that platform in it. So it's going to be interesting to look at this platform and think about Ultrabooks as they come in in the sub thousand dollar price uh, later this year. So it's a Sandy Bridge platform. So it's second generation Core i5. It is the 253 no, 2357M CPU, I had to write that down, uh, which is a, a processor that runs 800 megahertz through to 2.3 gigahertz with the Intel Turbo Boost technology, four gigs of RAM. Uh, we've got, as I said, 13 inch screen, it's 1366 by 768. And there's a whole load of nice features on the device that I wanna quickly show you in this video. First of all though, we'll go around the device and I'll show you uh, the ports and the layout of the device. So, this is a uh, lovely packaging we've got here, as you'd expect from a 1600 uh, euro product. I'm not going to show you too much about the packaging, I'm just going to get the device out and, and show you that, because there it is, and as I said, ultra thin and really quite a uh, unique design there. I want to make sure I get that in focus. Um, this is an aluminium uh, casing or Duralinium, I think they call it. It's uh, out of the aircraft industry. Um, so that's metal on the front there and kind of uh, hard plastic on the back. Um, it's extremely light for the size of device that you've got there. Matte screen, really nice keyboard, very big trackpad with integrated uh, buttons. And of course you'll see around the sides, no ports at all. Well, let me give you a quick rundown of what happens here because the ports are hidden away in some little flaps there that you can see. So we've got USB 3, we've got a headphone, and we've got a micro SD port on that side. And then on this side, we've got another USB 3, we've got a micro USB, and we've got a micro HDMI. So it's micro HDMI, which is your video output on here. The cable's not supplied, so you'll have to get yourself a cable um, for that, which is a little bit uh, disappointing that they didn't supply supply it. There is a micro USB cable in the device though. Um, here's the uh, power input here and on the other side it's some, some kind of lanyard port, port here. So as you can see really really nice design slim all the way around. Let's have a look at the bottom. Um, we have uh, yeah not much at all really. The main thing you need to know is it's a sealed unit so what Samsung have done is decided to seal the batteries in and that means you can do away with um, some of the battery um, uh, casing. So it means you can actually get more battery in the device. So what they've done is they've laid out uh, multiple lithium polymer probably batteries, flat ones, and they've got about 64 watt hours I believe uh, the specification is. I'm just checking here, 60, I haven't got the specs here, but I think it's about 64 hours. So it's a significantly large battery for the size and that's one of the advantages of sealing it in. Of course the disadvantage is if the battery runs flat you're going to have to get this serviced and get the battery changed and that won't be cheap. Uh, that's pretty much it on the uh, bottom of the device. So as you can see on the top, that's the, uh, the metal finish. Let's open that up and quickly go around some of the features as I sit here. Matte screen. This and this is, uh, I haven't actually switched this device on, off yet. It's one of the features that I want to show about, tell you about. It's the quick start. It just seems to last forever in standby and it does a really fantastic job of doing a quick start so you really don't have to turn this, this off. A bit like the MacBook uh, Air. It's got a backlit keyboard which is not on right now. I don't know if I can quickly show you that. Um, probably not. Uh, maybe I have to log in to show you that. I'll quickly do that. Um, power button here. We've got some lights here. There's a speaker out. No, there's a fan vent at the back here. 
Um, you don't need to worry too much about heat and fan noise. It's an extremely efficient device. I haven't had any problem with noise on the fan. And in fact, you could turn it into a silent mode as well, which is pretty nice. Huge trackpad here with integrated left right mouse buttons. Now it takes some getting used to. Um, you will find yourself clicking, trying to double click the uh, pad and then clicking the mouse buttons by accident. Uh, it is huge, a huge mouse pad as well so you've got the risk of actually hitting it while you're typing. You can lock it out and of course you can use an external mouse as well. Um, there's probably the one feature that will take most getting used to is the uh, is the mouse pad on this. I won't say it's bad, I won't say it's good, it's just different. 1366 by 768 screen, let's try that uh, backlight on the... Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, it actually says because the room is too bright here it won't switch the backlight uh, on for the keys which is a shame. I'll show you that in another video maybe. So that's pretty much it. We've got a uh, camera here as well. I presume there's an ambient light sensor somewhere around here as well, but I can't uh, can't see it. Overall, really, really nice build quality as you expect from a $1,600 uh, uh, dollar euro device. It's the Samsung Series 9 900X3A is the model number. We've got a 128 gigabyte fast SSD in here. There's no moving parts, which is again pretty important if you're if you're moving about ultra mobile. Um, we've got four gigabytes of RAM and, as I said, that uh, Core i5 Sandy Bridge uh, CPU in there. Is there anything else I need to tell you before we close up this video and move on to? Uh, I'm going to be reviewing this over the next few days. Um, Windows 7 Pro, of course. You don't forget that the platform also has Quick, Quick Sync Video on it, which is the hardware encoding and decoding for um, a couple of formats. I think H.264 is the main one you need to worry about. Um, so that really helps with uh, re-encoding videos for things like iPods, uh, iPhones, iPad, uh, and other uh, devices that need specific um, bit rates and form uh, resolutions on the on the video. Um, and the other thing I want to mention about this is it does seem to be that you could lock this down into an 800 megahertz mode and really get a kind of netbook style performance, netbook plus I would say, it moves it into the sort of like what used to be called CULV, so sort of 20, 30, 40 percent more power than a netbook, um, but within a really nice power band that allows you to work for sort of eight hours, seven hours, always on with Wi-Fi, it seems to be really efficient. And in fact, in some situations, even in that mode, it seems to be getting things done quicker than a netbook and therefore saving power because you're actually moving on to the next task or being able to close the device before, uh, you know, as, um, as soon as you can. So, of course, you've got the high power modes as well. I'm just going to quickly, quickly demonstrate uh, some of the Intel Quick Sync video technology. Here's a 1 minute 37 uh, video, it's H.264, about 2 megabits per second. I'm going to convert it to an iPad 2 format now. That actually probably would would play on the iPad 2 natively anyway. But let's convert it to the iPad format. Uh, on a netbook, this would take about 4 minutes, I would say. 3 minutes maybe. So we're just going to do this and see how this goes. Watch this bar here. And see how quickly that does that. And that's done in three, two, one, and that was about six seconds. So that makes converting at least uh, conversions uh, very quick. Um, it's possible it will also help video editing and the encoding process for video editing as well. But we'll um, we'll test that. So it's the Samsung Series 9, the 900X3A, uh, not an ultra book, but uh, ultra slim and at 1.3 kilos, pretty light as well, it's the same weight as a netbook. Expensive, but interesting to look at the uh, the sort of power capability on this, the processing power capability and think about ultra books in the future. We'll be testing this uh, and writing uh, more reports at ultrabooknews.com, that's ultrabooknews.com and uh, you can track uh, new products there as well because we're going to be tracking uh, all, the, all the news and new products that come in over the next months. My name is Chippy, thanks to Samsung for sending the uh, Series 9 out and thanks for watching. See you on the next video.